Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Before we get into it, I want to say thank you guys for all the support that's being shown on these videos so far. Uh, all the likes and comments are, are very cool for me to see, and I'm having a lot of fun with these, so there will definitely be some more if you guys uh, seem to enjoy this stuff. So, today I hope you brought your damn sunscreen, because we're about to be playing in the sun, boys. I've got a very interesting sun team here, full of some Pokemon you don't really expect to see most of the time. I honestly just wanted to try to get these bad boys to, to do some work, as per usual. Um, Opponent's team is rocking some very scary Pokemon that kind of don't really perform too well for my squad. Uh, there's Pokemon like the, the Togekiss, there's the, you know, the Dragonite, so hopefully we can make some stuff happen here. Anyway, I'm unsure what they're going to really lead with, so I'm just going to toss out Sheldon and get that sun up. I am holding the Heat Rock, so I'm able to keep that around for extended turns, as this team kind of does rely on having that extra speed from the Chlorophyll to be able to out, uh, outspeed some stuff. So... Uh, this is an int interesting lead for me here. I'm expecting them to probably just go for the Volt Switch rather than going right for the attack uh, on turn one. They're probably expecting me to go for a Switch here so they can get a nice little pivot and find a good matchup. They do go for the Volt Switch there, and goddamn, that does a lot of damage to Sheldon. Sheldon's like, the hell, man, I may as well have just taken a Hydro Pump, but <laughs> I am able to get my Stealth Rock up. Stealth Rock is important in this matchup because he has Pokemon like the Dragonite, who does take the, the rock damage and breaks its multi-scale. Um, and overall, just really good to have those entry hazards, because any, any chip damage I can get to help out this team in getting some KOs is definitely uh, necessary. So, they pivot into the Milotic, and you're looking at my team and you're thinking, damn, there's grass types all over this bitch, we're probably going to have no problem here. Problem is, i got to figure out who to kind of allocate to this issue and who I need to save for later. I decide, you know what, fuck it, I'm going right into the absolute unit early, boys. We're bringing in the Sunflora against Milotic here. It could potentially hit me with an Ice Beam, but I know I can take at least one. Uh, they end up just going for the Scald there, which is fine in the Sun. Uh, reduced damage from Water Moves, not going to be able to do too much. They do get a critical hit and a burn, though. So it's a tough day to be a Sunflower. Uh, but, you know, when isn't it? Honestly, no one gives any respect to my boy Sunflora. And we're about to finally <laughs> prove why... Uh, why it deserves it. So here I'm thinking, okay, are they going to switch into the Togekiss? If they do, I can go for Sludge Bomb. Um, if they decide to stay in, I think a Leaf Storm can kill, but do I want to leave uh, this matchup with minus Special Attack? It's honestly going to be a pretty tough call. I really want to go for Sludge Bomb expecting the Togekiss, but then I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I'm just going to go right for the Leaf Storm, get some big damage. They actually end up staying in because they underestimated the damn Sunflower boys. So they went ahead and violated rule number one, and that is do not fuck with the Sunflower in the Sun, boys. Uh, so that takes care of that thing. I'm going to take some Life Orb damage and some Burn damage, so, you know, unit seen some better days. But honestly, it's just extremely satisfying seeing this thing take out anything, so I'm calling that a dub. Anyway, now they're going to Togekiss. Um, I do have Sludge Bomb for this, but after minus two special attack, it's not going to be looking too promising here. I can't outspeed, though, so I'm thinking, honestly, my main goal with this Togekiss is to knock it to the range where um, I can just have any other Pokemon take it out with some chip damage. So I'm going to go for this Sludge Bomb here. I just figured, looking at my team, it's not really worth switching out. Um, no one really likes to take any air slash damage, plus I want to try to maintain uh, the sun up as long as possible. So I go for the sludge bomb there. After minus two, it's not quite going to do too much, but I'm, I'm feeling comfortable in that it did you know, a good chunk to that thing to be able to handle this Togekiss. Uh, they do take me out with an air slash there, but that is fine. Sunflower, you did something, buddy, and I'm, I'm proud of you. You got to talk to your plants. You know, they, they, they get that positive reinforcement. It helps out. Anyway. Now I'm like, you know what, you saw the Sunflower do work, it's time to bring in Balls, the cast form. He's got his, his, his balls hanging, he's ready to just absolutely whoop some ass. Um, he actually generates some more balls here on his head as he turns into Sun form. Um, a forecast cast form, about to put in the work, I'm thinking at least. I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt here. It, this thing does actually outspeed me, because this is uh, the one you know Sun Pokemon on my team that actually doesn't benefit from a speed boost, as it's not Chlorophyll. Uh, but he goes for the Thunder Wave there, he wants to make this thing even slower than it already freaking is, and I do get fully paralyzed there. Which actually does suck, because I was thinking Thunderbolt might have been in range to take it out there, that would have been fantastic. Uh, at this point, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to click Ice Beam here in case, for whatever reason, they switch into Dragonite. Either way, Thunderbolt uh, or Ice Beam is going to do similar damage, uh, the same damage to this Togekiss. Actually reveals that it's Morning Sun, and that is extremely inconvenient, considering I have the sun up here. Um, I go for the Ice Beam, it actually doesn't even put it to half, and I'm like, God damn it, Togekiss has been the bane of my existence for years, I swear to God. Every, t every time I hop online, you gotta deal with one of these fat bastards, God. But, uh, see, <laughs> here I'm thinking, okay, if I can still end this matchup, if Castworm has to go down, but I'm able to put this thing to, like, at least 30% or so, I should be able to, uh, to be okay. 
they're gonna go for the air slash there. They do not flinch me, but I do get the, the full para. And, you know, anytime I thunder wave the opponent, I get maybe one para hacks out of like eight turns. So I got two out of three there because my, sh my luck is shit. Uh, I feel like if the game sees me using a cast form, they could like toss me a bone sometimes, but you know, don't be like that. Anyway, they go for the uh, ancient power <laughs> to take me out. Luckily, don't actually get the stat boost with that, so that's fantastic, as now my sun fades away. Um, the sun fading away on a turn where I have a switch in is actually pretty ideal. So I can just switch right back into my Torkoal and get back up that sun. I say, no, 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 it's getting a little chilly out here. It's time to it's time to bring out that heat. Now I have a couple different options here. After getting the sun up, I can conserve uh, Sheldon here, switch it out. But honestly, still nothing really wants to come into an air slash here. Um, so you know what? I'm thinking, I'm just going to go ahead and explode, boys. It's, it's time. It's been years. It's time to explode. They go for the air slash. I'm like, please do not flinch. I live it with three. And now, well... Explosion does not hit like it used to, <laughs> but I'm at least able to put this Togekiss in range to where now I can bring in something easily outspeed since the sun is up, and I still have enough sun turns up since I didn't use very much for bringing in Turtle and just exploding that I can potentially get a late game sweep going uh, with that Chlorophyll. So I'm thinking I'm going to bring in Executor. It's looking pretty much the best against uh, the rest of their matchup considering uh, they still have Pokemon like the Dragonite and stuff left. I can go for a Sleep Powder and uh, hopefully not miss. So. Um, I'm just going to finish this bad boy off with a Psychic. There's no reason to click Sludge Bomb, really. I'm just kind of weighing the options of what they have left on their squad. Uh, what they're working with is going to be the Breloom, the Arcanine, Dragonite, and the Rotom Wash. So, obviously Arcanine is a bit of a threat. Dragonite's always a damn threat. So, let's see how this goes. Executor takes some Life Orb damage. I'm just out here bouncing around, soaking up them rays. You know, just doing, just doing what this guy does. Um, as they bring in the Arcanine here. So they take a buttload of damage from the Stealth Rock. And I do see that Intimidate, but honestly, Tree ain't afraid of nothing. No forest fires here, boys. Um, I do need to land a Sleep Powder to kind of have any chance in this match. I go for the Sleep Powder here, I do connect. Executor, just doing the damn thing. Redhead is just, his eyesight is immaculate. This guy's never missed in his life. I swear to God, talking about 20-20 vision out here. So at this point, now I'm just free to start hitting this thing with some Psychics. I don't really know what build this Arcanine is, which is why I wanted to go for the Sleep Powder there. Um, so I just go right for the Psychic here. That stabs Psychic with Life Orb. After Stealth Rock damage, it turns out it's actually just going to knock out this Arcanine. I kind of, for some reason, underestimated the Executor. But forgive me, for I will not be making that mistake again. Executor is the fucking goat. I swear to God, I love this Pokemon. It is, it's honestly, it's so fun to use. But now they bring in Dragonite. And this kind of puts me in the same situation I just was, where... I probably have to go for a Sleep Powder here to, to give myself a chance. I know I have Squishy in the back who has the Ice Beam, so I'm thinking, I'm going to go for the Sleep Powder here. This will probably work out for me. Please hit. It does. Like I said, guy has never missed in his damn life. But we got a Sleepy Dragon over here. I'm thinking this is a great position to be in, and he just pops out a Berry. <laughs> he actually uh, is going to be Lumberry, and I was really hoping that it wasn't going to be Lumberry, but it is. It's able to again go for an Outrage. And that kind of cuts uh, my tree sweep a little little short there, but, you know, that's fine. Um, because now I'm able to get a free switch into the Gastrodon. And knowing this thing is locked into Outrage, I am full max defense, so I should be able to easily take one. As long as there's no critical hit. Goes for the Outrage here. This guy is pissed off. Squishy says, that didn't even, it didn't even hurt. Did that, did something just touch me? I don't know. <laughs> it is going to get confused here after two turns. I then go for the nice little Ice Beam, and that is going to take care of Dragonite. Very important that I was able to break that thing's Marble Scale ability with the with the Stealth Rock there, so that is extremely useful. Slug is uh, Slug's looking pretty solid here. I'm, I'm at about half health. Um, they do have the Breloom left. I actually don't know if I mentioned that they have the Breloom, uh, but they do. Freaking Snail's Arch Nemesis comes in, aka Grass, second to... Salt, I guess, but so I obviously can't really do anything here. He's going to go for the Bullet Seed, um, and that is fine. Honestly, actually good that they didn't go for Spore and start setting up there, but Bullet Seed takes care of Gastrodon, but Gastrodon did what it needed to do. From the start, I knew that that Ice Beam was going to be clutch uh, against that Dragonite. So, all I've got left is some Kale in a Dream, boys. I'm talking about one Kale chip against, against the world here. <laughs> so... Um, I'm fairly certain that an X Scissor actually knocks this thing out at this point. Um, I, I haven't ran any calcs, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident. Plus, I know um, that Leafeon can definitely take a hit or two from this thing. He goes for the Mach Punch just before it goes down here. 
as uh, I do get that X Scissor off, is going to take care of the Breloom, and that is amazing. So, I'm feeling good. I've got the sun up. I'm fast as hell. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling leafy, and then the, the, the sunlight fades, which I did not account for because now all they've got left is going to be that Rotom Wash. It's all going to come down to this, boys. If Rotom Wash can knock me out in one hit here, I am going to lose because I know these probably faster without the sun up. All I can do is essentially click Leaf, Bra Leaf Blade and pray. Kale, you're a superfood. You got to help me out of here, buddy. Goes for the Hydro Pump. Highest damage output against Leafeon is going to be that Hydro Pump. I do live it with 12 HP, which is actually insane. Leaf Blade is going to land on the washing machine, and that is going to take that thing out. So the Torkoal was able to set up the sun not quite long enough, but Kale did not care because I was able to come out on top there. So first match with this sun team, it, it, it worked out for me. I'm thinking, damn, that was, that was actually really close. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the match, guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. I, hope you, I really hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure you smash that like button. It really does help out the channel. And also, subscribe if you haven't already. There will be definitely some more content like this coming out very soon. Peace out.